Today in the crypto space, we see Bitcoin and Ethereum holding steady Bitcoin at $17,000 and Ethereum right around that $1,300 mark. The rest of the crypto space is pretty much holding steady, maybe looking for a little bit of a pullback throughout the market. And I think that Bitcoin needs our attention. In today's video, guys, I want to talk about Bitcoin. I want to look at Ethereum and I also want to relate their price action to the Bitcoin dominance. Today's video is going to be a market recap from a leading indicator perspective, looking at Bitcoin and Ethereum. So you know what? Let's talk about the news. Let's analyze the charts and let's strategize to capitalize. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and let's get right into it. Welcome. Welcome. If you're new to the channel, special welcome on the channel. We talk about Bitcoin. We talk about Ethereum and we look at the entire crypto space and we look at these altcoins and look for opportunities, whether we go bullish or bearish, guys, we need to have a plan and a strategy ready to go so we can capitalize on any of that volatility. And if you appreciate that strategy, do yourself a favor and subscribe to the channel and click the bell button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Guys, I try to release a video anytime I see something interesting in the news or in the charts. And today I want to talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum as leading indicators of our market, of the crypto market. I think they deserve our attention. So far, you know, we've been talking about altcoins quite a bit on the channel. And of course, altcoins do a little bit better you know, for uh, as an algorithmic perspective for the channel for growth. But sometimes it's not about that. Sometimes it's about what's good for the followers of the channel and for the general community. And I think today it's all about Bitcoin and Ethereum, just to be prepared for what these heavyweights are going to do in the upcoming days. If you appreciate that strategy, if you appreciate my objective here is to keep it real and forget about the views. Slap the like button, guys, so you can get this video out there as, to as many people as possible. You know, as a new channel, the support is greatly appreciated. Okay, so let's get right into it. Before we look at the Bitcoin price and the Ethereum price and we get in through the TA, let's look at the general market. Guys, we're hesitating right now. And we can see that Bitcoin's slightly pulling back and so is Ethereum. And my previous analysis was that maybe this is good. At the bottom of the range here, we want to make sure... The bulls want to make sure, if you're looking from a bullish perspective, we want to make sure that this is a support before we go in heavy, right? And the only way to do that is to backtest previous breakouts so that we can get in with confidence. And when we break out at key areas of resistance and we get that support, guys, you can imagine that the volatility to the upside is going to be a lot greater. And that's what we want to make sure we're, we're aware of and where that our positions or our bags are packed for that leg to the upside, right? So right now, I have a little bit of a short, short-term bearish bias with a longer-term um, bias to the upside as a relief rally, as a bearish relief rally or bear market relief rally, and then potentially a downturn to come and test these lower levels once again um, in, you know, upcoming months. And that's what I'm kind of looking at right now, you know, trying to ride the market, the ebb and flows of the market is key, guys. Okay, so if we continue going down, we have BNB going sideways pretty much, retesting previous local highs, um, XRP going sideways, a lot of sideways action, um, even Polygon. If you look at this, this could be a big consolidation pattern throughout the market. We see a lot of this chop action happening. Polka dot at the bottom of the range. Could this be a good buy the dip opportunity? OKB getting a little bit of a pump, but overall we see sideways action. The only one right now that's going rogue is Tron, but not by much, guys. Only one percent. So, you know, let's chill out about that. It, you know, although we see some good price action, it just means that relative to its previous price action, you know, one percent gain is is is, is obviously it's one percent but it's not much, okay? So Solana still under the microscope right now regarding whether it has a future or not. Guys, at this $13 price tag, $13.5 price tag, guys, it doesn't matter. Take a small punt. That's what I how I look at it, okay? So Solana, uh, sorry, Uniswap going sideways. Dex, the Dex ecosystem or the Dex narrative right now is hot. Stay tuned. Tomorrow's video is going to be um, an important one. I think it's a narrative or a project that fits this narrative absolutely perfectly. So make sure that you follow the channel, guys, so you don't miss out on the, on that video. Also, guys, follow me on Twitter. 
I do give you a lot of what I'm thinking about throughout the day on Twitter regarding price action and news. So follow me there. Let's continue here. Avalanche at the bottom of the range. Do I see any good project? Wow. Chainlink giving us another opportunity. I'm hoping to see the, uh, some bullish divergence at these bottom at the bottom of this range right here. We could be creating a pivot point. When we see double bottoms, even a lower low, that would give us uh, an opportunity to go check some oscillators for a pivot point. Okay, so this radar, I'm, I'm going to go check that out. Definitely go check it out. Uh, Monero uh, hesitating at the top of the range. This is another potential you know, shorting opportunity with a clear stop loss right above previous highs. In this case, it's about risk to reward ratio. The risk is uh, what we break, we continue going up. Sure, we hit a quick tight stop loss. But what about if we get rejected and we come back down? That looks good. It could be very possible, especially if we see Bitcoin and Ethereum coming down. The likelihood is that Monero is going to take a hit. OK, so this is what it is. Um, Let's see, CRO is consolidating here at the bottom of the range. Still kind of, you know, under fire a little bit. Uh, Algorand at the bottom of the range. I think Algorand is definitely undervalued. Uh, unfortunately, it's t it, it, the, the sell the news event regarding the, the World Cup took it hard. So I, I'm still thinking that it's undervalued. Algorand, Filecoin, Apecoin, what else do we see here? Hedera Hashgraph getting a little bit of a pump but not much nothing really has moved if you look look at the percentages guys we're looking at short short term little rallies nothing huge however if you're a short term trader uh, i'm looking at the fact that the market could be pulling back okay guys so overall that's my consensus looking at this general market looks like we're due for a pullback in general all right let's get into the charts guys i know you're here to see what i have to say about the ta and I want to start off with Bitcoin dominance. Let's look at the Bitcoin dominance. I know a lot of traders use this as far as assessing the strength of the market, meaning what is in power here? What is what is uh, dominating the uh, market cap in the sense that Bitcoin right now is at the bottom of the range from a broader perspective, from a daily perspective regarding dominance? Could this Bitcoin dominance eventually find its way back up to about 47%? You know, it, it's very possible, very possible, considering that maybe this is range bound. You know, we did get a previous high and this zone right here, even from this area, from history has been a really important area. So we can, it would be smart for us to drag this out because we got rejected from this zone before. And in fact, maybe even dragging it to the upside and focusing on these tops a little more and that we created a higher high um, tells us that, you know, maybe this is a range bound type of scenario. Bitcoin could definitely rally to this level and then come back down, rally up and down, right? But a lot of us believe, especially those that are not um, Bitcoin maximalists, right? Believe that altcoins have a lot more growth and a lot more room to kind of grow in the crypto space and eventually see market cap growth. And with that growth, we're going to have to understand that altcoins eventually will have a lot more dominance than Bitcoin. And if you really understand what Bitcoin is about, eventually Bitcoin is supposed to plateau. Bitcoin growth is supposed to kind of chill out after a while as a store of value. It's not meant to be for transactions, daily transactions. Um, we're supposed to have other solutions for that in the crypto space uh, using blockchain te technology. And this is part of the narrative as well for all coins is that all coins have greater use, more use case, smart contracts and so on and so forth. And we're, because of this, we're going to see the overall market cap of crypto grow. And with that being said, we're also going to see that altcoins will have to reclaim or claim some dominance over Bitcoin, given that Bitcoin's use case is pretty much fixed. It's supposed to be digital gold. OK, so let's consider that. Let's 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 be objective. I know a lot of uh, Bitcoin maxis will argue that this is not the case. And but this is not the channel for that. Here we look for opportunities, whatever it is, bullish or bearish, up or down. What do I see in the charts? And I see that right now, Bitcoin dominance could come up. And that will be indicative of a nice rally to the upside in the in the beginning of a bull market. 
a nice beginning of the bull market is where you see Bitcoin rally and thrive. And that's when we see capital enter the market is through Bitcoin and interest, new users, newcomers to the space. It's always usually through Bitcoin. Now, things could change definitely because altcoins are a, definitely a hot topic because of the gains that you can make. And of course, the new technology that is being produced and, and, and developed. And this brings newcomers to the space for sure. But if we're going to maintain the trend, which usually the trend is your friend, guys, until otherwise, the trend is that in order to see the bull market continue or begin we need to see an influx of bitcoin dominance so what i'm kind of saying here is that perhaps we see bitcoin eventually one day get to this zone once again however if we look at it from the other perspective it could be that we fall below this area of support and we see all coins thrive from the get-go without bitcoin dominance uh, or bitcoin reclaiming that dominance right in the past bitcoin and altcoins had a different relationship and this is something i know a lot of people say oh this time is different but this time it actually is different because of the ability to scale into altcoins directly from stablecoin or usdt or even usdc you don't need to buy bitcoin in order to get into altcoins anymore whereas in the past bull runs if you've been around as long as I have, you would have you would know that you would have to buy Bitcoin before you bought altcoins. And that is generally the reason why some people think or assume that that's why you would get that influx in Bitcoin before the beginning of an altcoin season, which is very true, very possible. So it could be that maybe an altcoin season can start without Bitcoin rallying first. And that's very true, very possible, guys. We have to anticipate that things may not be the same as history. You know, sometimes you know history does repeat, sometimes it does, but sometimes it rhymes more than it repeats. And we better be prepared for that. So it could be that we do rally and we see Bitcoin come back to its dominance, or we see that altcoins, people get straight into altcoins from the get-go, and we see altcoins, uh, Bitcoin dominance drop, meaning that altcoins will reclaim some of that dominance. And if that happens, guys, we can get down really low, down to 20% very quickly, right? And there's not much clear price action looking left, even if we get in the weekly, like there's not much data to suggest that that's the case, but you can see that Bitcoin has been losing dominance as altcoins enter the market and take some of its market cap. We need the market cap as a whole to increase. And I assume that all coins will reclaim some of that dominance as that also happens. Okay, so we have to understand the sentiment of the market and the buyers in the market and the overall narratives that exist and so on and so forth. Okay, trying to keep a very objective mindset. Now, if we get into lower time frames on this Bitcoin dominance, it's very, very possible that we could come break down here. And because we've been touching this line here as support at 40% for a while, if we break below, guys, we're going to see either two things. We're going to see the market rally with all coins outperforming Bitcoin, meaning all coins are going to pump. We're going to see all coin season. Or we could also see a, 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 a capitulation or a dump throughout the market while Bitcoin dumps even harder and altcoins maintain their level, which I have never seen before and I doubt that's going to happen because altcoins being more speculative, we should see altcoins bleed out harder than Bitcoin at all times, you know, especially in such a um, market that's still in its infancy, okay? So at this level, I'm not expecting the latter. I'm expecting that if we see Bitcoin dominance drop, it's just that all coins are prepared or have matured as an asset class and will have its own gateway to the market cap instead of getting into Bitcoin first. That's my objective. That's what I'm thinking here, guys. So let's pay attention to this right now. If we even get into lower time frames, we do see a consolidation a pattern scenario happening. We could come back down to lower levels and maybe break down below the 40% mark. And this is where the risk to award ratio scenario comes into play. If we there's a good likelihood that many people are betting that we bounce. So stop loss wise, I know this is not trading, but if you think about it, the invalidation of this idea is right below these previous lows. That means if we break below these lows, even this yellow line, guys, all coin season, here we come. That's what I think. 
All right, guys, let's get into Bitcoin first. Let's look at what Bitcoin is. We touched upon Bitcoin yesterday. And I know I made some of these squiggly lines and my my TA right now is looking like a mess. But I like mess because the more dense the mess is, the more uh, information I get out of it. And I'm good at um, filtering through disasters. And right now we can see that we do have a descending wedge of some sort, a, uh, maybe a, a bearish pennant, a wedge. OK, and right now, this is a bullish pattern from a bigger perspective. It should break bullish. But what's the length of this wedge? Could this wedge get down a little bit lower towards the apex of this wedge, considering that it is somewhat of a triangular formation? Could it get closer down to these zones around this isolated zone that we everybody's talking about between the thirteen to twelve thousand dollar mark is what I'm looking at that we could potentially get down to these levels however what about if this is our temporary bottom what about if this is a temporary area where we get some relief right so let's zoom in a little bit um but maybe before we zoom in um maybe what we should do let me quickly change the appearance no let's dial line let's get rid of this this the screw status line Okay, let's see what else we can get rid of. Okay, so you can see that ultimately what we did is we bounced. Okay, we bounced right off this zone, but I believe that we are going to continue this bounce, but not after we come down once again. And the only thing that is giving me this indication is that we're losing a little bit of momentum on the oscillators and not on the daily perhaps because that's what i believe on the daily eventually we're going to get here that's a slightly longer term time frame the macd is looking good nice and green nice and bullish we even see the emas trekking to the bullish control zone looking really good i'm expecting to get into overbought territory eventually on the daily which would mean that we would be testing this breakout zone right around this eighteen thousand dollar mark point of control at about 19 okay so you can see this volume gap is where we're, we might hit so even if we drag this down a little bit lower we see the volume gap right here okay at about nineteen thousand dollars or so so if we break above where we are right now we have a huge gap that can take us there quick 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 but I don't think we're there yet because when you get into lower time frames, it looks like we're getting exhausted based on the oscillators. We see that the RSI is getting bearish divergence right here on the 200 EMA on the four hour chart, which leads me to believe that the RSI is looking for a reset. And this reset is crucial at the bottom of the range because it gives us confidence. It gives us the ability to get into a position from a level of confidence that we've backtested this breakout we've, that we've been tracking for so long. And the TA has been so perfect. It even followed my line here pretty perfectly. Like it followed it pretty accurately. And now what we're doing is perhaps getting rejected here and coming down backtesting. Who knows how low we could go for this backtest. If we do a Fibonacci, Let's use this swing low to swing high just to be conservative. We already hit the 0.5 fib. If we use this as a swing low to swing high, we've hit the 38, uh, the 0.38, which is not deep enough of a retracement. It's just a breather or a pullback. So as long as we do not break below uh, the $16,700 zone, Guys, which is very confident with this point of control here, looking left, we have a lot of supply and demand, and the VPVR is confirming that based on this red line. Guys, we need to stay above this zone, okay, in order to protect this reversal, okay? Now, if we do break below and backtest, deep backtest, we could come down as low as the Golden Pocket 618, which would backtest this absolute trend line that we see here. And then we're expecting a lot of individuals to, uh, to go long, especially if we see some bullish divergence, some sort of inverse head and shoulders or W formation with bullish divergence, right? So I'm going to put another box in here, just right here at the zone, to kind of like highlight the importance of the fact that, you know, beginning right here is where maybe we should start considering scaling in for a potential bounce off this trend line. Now, it, it is very possible that we break below and we continue our bearish momentum, bearish 
um, downside slide to the downside that we've been experiencing. A lot of people want to see a, a, a ten thousand dollar Bitcoin. It's very possible, but one step at a time. Right now, I think that we're slowly going to break down, and that once we get to this zone, we need to check out if the RSI has reset. If the MACD has reset, and if it has around this area, we should start DCAing. And I'm looking to DCA around from this point to this point, which is the golden pocket. If we fall below the golden pocket, um, we start getting to the, uh, into territory where we're going to be keeping our fingers crossed that we don't create a lower low and cascade below the previous low. A lot of the times we can see price action break trend, break, break below trend and get back into this consolidation, eventually consolidate and then break back above. But it's about risk to reward ratio here, guys. If we break below this trend line and we break below this low at 16,000, Guys, I, I'm not I'm not too happy about that. It starts to become a scenario where we might test these previous lows down here at 15 and we start cascading down. So it's important to set your stop losses and be prepared that this bullish setup, if we do get that back test, might continue cascading. And that's why you got to wait for patterns at the bottom of the range and wait for these oscillators to, to set up, right? So let's do a, uh, um, a trade setup. Let's say you get in, in in and around this zone. Um, I would definitely expect it bounce to at least. Um, let's kind of scooch this over. Depending on how long it takes, time is difficult to assess. But maybe around here, let's say, as soon as we get to that trend line. And I would set a tight stop loss. If you did it here, your ratio is still good, 3 to 1. However, I would be a little conservative and maybe put it here, which just makes it 2 to 1. Sorry, 2% loss with a 14% gain. That's pretty, pretty good. That would be a 7 to 1 ratio. Sorry, pretty, pretty good. Now, even down here, it's still good, right? right? But up here, it's much better. But you never know. You could wick down to these levels and perhaps still get that bounce right around these lows. Um, let me get my pen tool. So this is a low. This is a low. Could we just come up and get another low here and bounce again? So maybe it depends on your risk tolerance. 886 is a deep retracement where we get lots of reactions. It could be that maybe three buy orders, three buy orders, getting in your uh, trade at a position where, you know what, if we came down to this zone, you set your stop loss right below these lows, and hopefully you can build a position right around this this zone right here, anywhere within this by dollar cost averaging. Get in with 50 bucks, double up, get in with 100. Double up, get in with 200. Yeah, your average position is going to be $700 in, but your purchase price will be dollar cost average. And I bet you, you'll be right around the zone at about $15,800 or so. And if we get a bounce off of these double bottoms with bullish divergence, guys, you're looking good. And it's because the daily still looks fairly good, right? Um, the the four hour looks like it's trying to reset. That's all I say. That's all I think at this moment. It looks like it's trying to get a little bit of a pullback. Okay, so that's my analysis on Bitcoin. On the one hour, it's a little bit of a short time frame, and you can see the RSI is trying to tick downwards. So is the MACD. Sorry, let's reposition the MACD so we can see it a little bit better. See, like it's still red. Who knows how low. Sometimes you can see, even when we get pale pink histogram bars, we still get those fake outs to the downside. It could still come down. So it's not looking good. And, and this looks like an inverse head and, sh uh, head and shoulders formation that could definitely backtest this trend line. And that's why I kind of want to scale in right around these areas, looking at these green arrows as potential uh, buy orders. But... Before I actually do that, I don't just don't blindly go and put in buy orders. I look at my oscillators, especially on the four hours. I want to see these reset before I start scaling in. You can use the stochastic, the MACD, the RSI, any oscillator that works for you. Guys, do your research, get into it, start creating a plan uh, using some of these oscillators that you like and come up with that, right? So getting that pullback and don't forget, Sundays are usually quite bearish and we got the PPI data that caused a little bit of bearish price action, consider that it came in hot, slightly above uh, projected 
um, levels. I think it was at 7.7 .7 where we thought it was going to come in at 7.4. So slightly above. And that's why the markets reacted a little bit in the red today. Not huge amounts, but a little bit. Okay, so let's get into the uh, Ethereum price quickly as another heavyweight, the leading indicator of all coins. We went into a trade here. It, looked out, it, it worked out perfect. Let's remove that. I don't want to gloat or say anything about that. You know, trades work out sometimes and sometimes they don't. Look at this trade. It worked out head and shoulders, buy orders, pumps to the upside you know it works out sometimes we hit it guys and we hit it more often um than we don't so that's it's all about probability and being able to win more than you lose and when you do win take profits that's that's the key guys not giving them back to the market right so let's kind of look at this price action i know my ta again is a little messy but it's okay guys um and don't forget guys if at any point i'm offering you any sort of value do me a favor guys slap the like button just slap it because it does help with the algorithm as a new channel it's hard to get you guys in here watching these videos and getting that support so um any support is is greatly appreciated okay so uh right now what we are seeing is i see some sort of triangular pattern right consolidation slash maybe symmetrical triangle let's see let's see let's connect some of these dots right bottoms 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 a little bit of a triangular formation. I don't think that it's complete. Let's get into daily quickly. I want to see broad perspective. Very similar to Bitcoin, obviously. And we were we were we were doing well. Look at these. Look at these. Look at this analysis, like from previous, from the bear, from when we started this bear market, right? Like we we really we took profits, buy orders here, you know, okay, you know, and then sell, taking profit. Like we did we did pretty good. We timed the bottoms and the tops like pretty accurately on all these waves. This one right here was pretty good. So like overall, you know, right now the way what we're looking for is this starts to look like a bearish pennant, a continuation pattern, considering that we're continuing this cascade to the downside, right? Uh, this cascade followed by a symmetrical triangle like that suggests continuation to the downside. And sometimes continuation to the downside doesn't mean that a continuation has to be huge. It just matter. It means that maybe we might come back down, retest previous lows, test for some liquidity again, and get a quick, quick rally to the upside. And to be honest, that's the way you create those inverse head and shoulders formations and W's, right? Because if you look at this, all it really takes, let's get a pen tool and, you know, all it really takes, right? This could be a shoulder. This could come down, right? Come down, be ahead, come back up, come back up, make another shoulder and boom. And then it's inverse head and shoulders and we're gonna, everyone's gonna be screaming inverse head and shoulders, right? And yes, we did come down to about $600 and everybody's already saying $500 Ethereum. And it's very possible, all of this is very possible. So we gotta be prepared, okay? So that's all I'm saying here, guys. The price action, this is a typical accumulation phase at the bottom of the range hunting liquidity where people never expected ethereum to go and it could go right and a breakdown from this symmetrical triangle is probably uh pretty this is almost pretty accurate it's equal to the um opening of the symmetrical triangle which is here and if we grab that and take it to the breakout which is 70 percent towards the apex guys i'm not saying that we're gonna get a, a 50 dollar you know this is crazy but what i'm trying to say is you get these breakouts right and when you're at the bottom of the range right here I don't anticipate huge breakdowns because you have a lot of whales and a lot of buying pressure right here looking left at about $600. Look at that. Okay, so I, I think that, you know, this is an area to look out for and you see the cluster supply and demand based on the VPVR. We have a volume gap here and we start to pick up some volume right about $600, even slightly above at $750, that little spike there looking right, uh, you know, on, on the VPVR. So, Guys, it's 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 very possible that we do come down, but if we look at the uh, oscillators here, the MACD is still in the green. Okay, I'm starting to lose a little bit of momentum if you look at the green histogram bars. But you know, look at that—it reverses and goes back up. We see that the RSI or the EMAs are, are trekking to the upside, and that's what caused these EM, uh, these um, histogram bars to pump green again so it could be that the emas get to the bullish control zone and then we get another wave of green histogram bars right so it's looking good it looks like we're getting positive momentum to the upside regarding the macd and the rsi is recovering from an a um over 
sole territory um, down to this end, and we came from here, and then we came and back tested, and we didn't create a lower low, but nonetheless, we are still kind of holding this level. And guys, right now, it's very possible that, let's see, I don't see any divergence on this daily. I don't. Not clearly. Now, if we get into, not even, like, I don't even want to look there. No, like, we're looking for horizontal supports right now, desperately, for Ethereum. Now, Ethereum, as far as a recovery, is looking really healthy. Let's see here what's going on here. Eh, a little bit more promising, but still not clear bullish divergence. Why I'm saying it's a little bit pro more promising is this, this dump is very, very steep to the downside, while the RSI is not equivalently steep. You can see that the... Um, the two bottoms here are almost the same, right? Just a slight dip. So, yeah, it, it, that's a bit the beginning of a loss of momentum, and 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 momentum as far as the the RSI, the strength index. But guys, honestly, it looks like we're consolidating here. We can we could come back to about fifteen hundred dollars or so and test the top of the range. And at that point, I would be I would be very uh, I would be watching because we could get rejected, come back down, get that six hundred six hundred dollar mark, and continue to the upside. But sometimes we we break bullish. If Bitcoin breaks bullish, all of this let's go in the four hour quick. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see. Yeah, this bullish divergence on the four hour, at least on the lower time frames, right? So we got these two bottoms coming down. RSI is trekking to the upside. So it looks like it reset. We're trying to get to the top of the range, which is about $1,450. Okay, so that for me is ideal. If we come down, okay, I, I, it could be risky, but setting a order long at, one th at about $1,000 or so from a risk to award ratio scenario is not bad, okay? Um, we just have to pay attention to those oscillators. Honestly, I'm I'm not feeling very strong with Ethereum at the moment, personally. I know a lot of people have bullish, bullish perspectives, but from a risk to reward ratio, if I were to go long, I would like to see Ethereum come back down, hit close to $1,000 again, um, or at least this trend line here at about $1,102 or so, and then start building a position around that range, okay? That's what it would make me very comfortable, especially if we get a pullback in Bitcoin. And then perhaps get back up to this level, which is at about $14,050. That's what I was, um, that's my analysis there. Now, if we break below this zone, yeah, we set a tight stop loss. Um, and if we break below, guys, we are coming down. And that's when you would have to get into a bigger position right here at the bottom of the range at 650. Wait for inverse head and shoulders, bullish formations, any type of uh, bullish divergences. And then we would get into a bigger long for a bigger move, bigger correction to the upside. And that's when you will see Ethereum do well, especially if Bitcoin drops, okay? If Bitcoin doesn't drop, I'm looking at something like this. Okay, maybe even a little lower to test the liquidity at the, the bottom of the range again. And that's very possible because right now this pendant's not looking the greatest. Be on, I'm honest. My honest opinion, I don't feel very confident with this pendant, especially on the daily. Like, I, I don't know. I, Bitcoin is looking for me a little bit more bullish because at least the divergence is a lot clearer. This is, yeah, trekking upwards while the RSI is also trekking upwards. What's up with that? Price action is coming down. I see continuation. I see potential, a, a little bit of a continuation here, maybe a little bit of a drop. All right, guys. So overall, the markets um, are choppy. Let's be real about this. Let's be real. They're choppy, really real um, chop action here. Um, even let's see with the eight hour, eight hour, 12 hour. Yeah. You know, when we get into extreme oversold or overbought territories, that's the best place to go. So I'm expecting pop, then back down, maybe uh, bullish divergence anywhere. I'm looking, nothing, nothing, guys, nothing at all. Uh, bullish divergence on the 8-hour, okay, sure, on the 12-hour, what about on the 8-hour? Yeah, when you get into lower time frames, higher, as you go higher, the divergence is not that clear, and you want the divergences to be clear on higher time frames, right? That's where you get the best confirmations. Guys, I don't know, let me know what you think about Ethereum. I'm bullish on Ethereum. 
I believe that it has a lot more growth than Bitcoin, a lot more use case. Obviously, there's some improvements that need to happen. However, guys, let me know what you think overall regarding the TA. Do, what do you think um, about this reversal where we are right now regarding the $1,000 mark on Ethereum price? I don't see any bullish divergences. Is there something I'm missing? Let me know in the comment section below, guys. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button. In addition, follow me on Twitter so that you can follow me on what I'm thinking throughout the day, guys. I give you updates regarding TA and price action. And of course, slap that like button, guys, if I gave you any alpha today, because it does really help with the algorithm. Take care. Have a good one. And don't forget, buy the dip. Thank mm -hmm. you.